Welcome back everybody to another exciting Duckman Cycles of VW Garage. We're back today with this 1972 Beetle and she is a beauty. And you're probably saying, hey, it's not a 72 and that's because, well, it's not. Or at least it doesn't have a lot of the parts that belong to a 72 on it. But this car is gorgeous and I like it just the way it is. So we're not changing the thing on it. However, it had a myriad of electrical problems on it. I mean, just nothing seems to work right on it, whether it be headlights, taillights, blinkers, uh, the charging system didn't work right. Even the indicator lights for the generator and the oil, they didn't work properly. In fact, they were inverted and one of them was dead due to problems. So we're gonna start replacing some switches and some stuff on this car today and get this thing straightened out. We've already diagnosed it in the last video. If you haven't seen that one, the link is right up here in the corner of your screen. So check out that video so you know what's going on with this one and you'll see exactly why we're doing what we're doing today. Well, we're gonna start at the heart of the problem and we're gonna start out with the voltage regulator which we know that was sucking the battery down on this thing even when everything was turned off. We didn't find anything else in the wiring or any of the circuits that was sucking any, any power, just if the regulator was connected to the battery and that's the only thing that was connected, it would suck that battery down. So that's where we're gonna start, right there. So like you like it, comment and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck that thing so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links and we'll be back right after that intro. Right, well welcome back. Right down here is where the voltage regulator lives. Here's the new piece that we got. We picked this one up locally. The reason why we got this one locally, we're not getting the exact same Bosch solid state one, is because these are relatively inexpensive. They're easy to come by from, from local parts suppliers, and they actually had a lifetime warranty on it, which means that you can pick this one up just about anywhere, and it's free the next time around it goes bad. So, we're gonna replace the sucker today, but first we're starting out by disconnecting the battery. You can see the negative is already off over there. So we're good to go. Looks like this one comes out with a Phillips head screw there, uh, over here as well. Uh, here's the nut. That's the nut that was loose in the last video. So we'll take that off of there too. And the rest of everything just kind of unplugs. So, let me show you how this works. There's our old one, no good. Let's get that out of here. And okay, we've got our battery reconnected. We'll turn our ignition switch. We got our generator light. Now this car, because the start button is bad, we're gonna be replacing that too, by the way. I have to uh, actually get in there and hot wire the thing. Better make sure we're not in gear. <laughs> that would have been bad. And that's how we started. And the generator light went out. Which means if I kill the engine, the generator light should be back on. There it is. Okay, now we just need to check voltages and make sure that it's charging correctly. Alright, so let's check our voltage. 12 volts, right? Rev it up. Still 12 volts. I suspect we have a bad regulator. I just put this thing in and clearly it's not working right. So I'll put the old one back in there and just see if we got voltage. Now, if you remember correctly, the reason why we replaced the old regulator wasn't because it wasn't regulating properly, because it actually was. The problem was it was killing the batteries. It was sucking them down. So if I put the old one back in circuit, it should be fine. I guess we'll see. Yep, I put the old regulator back in and guess what? It works just fine. So that's, uh, that's typical modern manufactured bullshit for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I drink. <laughs> Alright, well we're going to move on to the next thing before I go back to the store to replace that thing because I don't know what else we're going to have to replace that's, uh, you know, DOA. I'd like to replace the start button because that does not work and that needs to work. I'm tired of this jump starting crap. So let's get under there and take care of that. Certainly what takes this apart. This has a rubber gogi over the top of it. Looks like it's got some kind of a nut with three 
points on it or something, unless the nut's on the back side. Let's try to unscrew it and just see what happens. But you know what? It looks like it's unscrewing. Yes, the battery's disconnected, by the way, because we are working with high amperage stuff that's typically not fuse protected. Yeah, there it is. Okay, that wasn't so bad. There's our switch. Okay, that's simple enough. Looks like it's gonna be two Phillips head screws and the new one is just two Phillips head screws. Let's get that installed. That I didn't get into the full details of swapping the wires. I mean, anybody can pull a screw out and swap wires out on these things, but there it is. Okay, now let me disconnect that battery again before I slide this thing up in the dash because I don't wanna accidentally, you know, ground out on something and uh, cause a fire. <laughs> All right, that wasn't too bad. And that was probably on account of the radio not having been installed in the hole here. Come on, thread in there, you bastard. What's going on? It's one of those things you gotta have it threaded just perfectly straight. And, yep, that's exactly what it was. All right, if we turn our key on. Oop, hang on. First, we need to reconnect our battery. Connected, turn our key on. We got our generator light. Let's push that, should start. There it goes. We're running, fantastic. Another thing knocked off the list. Let's take care of that oil pressure light next. That's something that, uh, well, it really bothers me because I shouldn't even be running the engine unless I really know that it's making oil pressure. So that's kind of been a big no-no all along. I mean, I assume it's been fine because it's been driven this way for an awful long time. So it's probably okay, but uh, let's attack that next. We got an oil pressure switch right here. Look at that. These are super easy to change. Well, at least they are on a stock Beetle engine. This one has a little bit of a modification there due to an oil pressure sensor that somebody put on here to a gauge that doesn't exist anymore. But the oil pressure switch is right here and it's standing vertically. Normally it would go in horizontally this way into the engine block. So we're just gonna unscrew this thing out of here. We'll drop the new one in its place and then we'll reconnect the only one wire that attaches to it right up on top here. Release. There it is, that one. All right, let's get that taken care of. All right, the new one is in place. Let's put our wire back on it. New one, by the way, already had its uh, yeah, telephone tape on the uh, threads. This old one doesn't appear to have any. It also had a compression washer on it, which was kind of nice too. But anyway, it tightened all the way down to the compression washer, and I, that was finger tight. And I just gave it a little bit of a cinching with a, an adjustable bobble wrench because apparently I don't have a regular wrench that fits that for some reason. And I can't get a socket on it like I normally would on a stock beetle because it's in the way of the distributor. Which, by the way, this 009 is getting replaced too in this video. So say la vie, motherfucker. All right, if I got everything correct, we should have an oil light. Oh, look at that! And now, whoa, what just happened? A horn button shot out at me. Yeah, that was funny. That's gotta come out anyway because we gotta replace the ignition switch, so I gotta go and remove that nut. So I guess we skipped the step, or at least the car was so excited. It's like a Herbie thing there. <laughs> anyway, the oil light's working. So if I hit the start button, the oil light should go out. Yep, there they go. Fantastic. And if we turn this back off, should have an oil light again and generator light. Dual warning lights, that's what it's supposed to do. That's what it didn't do before. Anyway, we got that thing straight. Good, one more time. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Okay, good. This is what goes in behind the key tumbler. So the tumbler actually goes into this. It has the little spring in it that snaps it back after you release it from start. And all these little pins that are here connect at different instances when you turn this thing to certain positions. Now what this one is doing, if I turn that key, you'll see nothing happened. And actually I turned it a lot. I didn't just unlock the, uh, the wheel. I actually turned it enough that something should have happened and didn't. Turning it even more, now we got our idiot lights. But what's funny is when I turn on the headlights, we have none. Okay, I turn on the wipers, we got nothing. Absolutely nothing. Signals. Well, now we have signals, but actually earlier we don't. If I turn the headlight off, and I turn the wipers off, the signals will usually go off. This time they actually stayed on, that's kind of weird. But they're not flashing nonetheless. But if you doink with the key a little bit, sometimes you can get the signals to come on. You can actually hear all the little cracking in. 
Yeah, you can hear the little electrical sparks on the inside of the switch. Anyway, the signal's not doing what, what it's supposed to do right now. It was actually working earlier when I turned the key only to certain positions. Same with the headlights, they would come on only when the thing was in a certain position. And now it doesn't even want to do that. Okay, so we got bigger problems on here. The wipers were the same way. Now there it is. Now they came on. But only when the key is in that position. If I turn it back this way, you see we have lights, but we have no wipers. So it's got dead spots in it. That's probably the best example. That's the only one that seems to be consistent right now. So anyway, the um, ignition switch in here is definitely failing. It's on the way out. So we're going to replace that. Let me put these wipers back down where they belong in the parked position. Volkswagens don't automatically do that. <laughs> All right. So what we got to do, remember the horn button already flew off at me, and that just happened on its own. You know, good job, Herbie. We're going to take this nut out of here. We're going to pull the steering wheel out, and then there's four bolts with four really long flathead screws that hold in the whole um, uh, switch cluster that's inside of here. Once that's out, then there should be two bolts that go in this way that hold this thing in. And then we should be able to slide that up and out and disconnect the wiring from it. And then the real trick is to uh, <laughs> the real trick is to get the thing um, disconnected and pulled apart. So we'll see what happens when we get that far. Sometimes it's a hassle, sometimes it's not. It all depends on what kind of day I'm having, I guess. Anyway, let's start here. Oh, okay, here we go. That came out easier than I expected it to. It probably wasn't as tight as it needed to be. By the way, we got our steering wheel straight right now, and our wheels outside are straight also. But we need to put a marking on this so that way we know where we've got it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little scratch right here and right here. There we go. Now I know where our spot is, and the steering wheel should pull straight off the shaft, and it did. All right, there's our four screws, one, two, three, and the fourth one is buried in there. Very often on these cars, there isn't four remaining, or sometimes one of them or multiple of them is broken. I've even seen some cars where there's none. <laughs> it doesn't really help the switch cluster any because the whole switch cluster gets all floppy and sloppy inside of the steering column. But anyway, each one of these four screws has to come out. I think I got the wrong screwdriver with me for that. Let's find out. Yep. Oh, wait, you know, eh, no, it's the wrong one. Let's just get a better screwdriver and get that thing pulled apart. All right, before we pull it apart, let's disconnect the harness from it. As simple as that. In fact, that wasn't even plugged in all the way, which could have been part of our problem as well. All right, well, it's out. All right, off camera, I got all these screws loosened, so they're all out. So the whole switch cluster should pull straight up. Now, sometimes there's hoses on these for the windshield squirter. Yeah, there's the tubes for them, but on most cars, they've already been removed, and this is one such car that's just like that exactly. Okay. Now we got two screws inside of there. Those are the ones we talked about. I should pull the cover off of the steering lock here. So let's get those out of there. All right, those screws are now loose. So very gently, we should be able to pull this out and take the screws with it. There we go. Put that in the safe spot. Now this whole steering contraption should come up. Now you will need the key in it to be able to dislodge the, uh, you know what, still the battery plugged in, idiot, <laughs> it's out now, to be able to disconnect the uh, column lock and it should pull straight up and out. There it is. And you know what, somebody's already been in here because they don't usually come apart that easy. But there's our switch, that's the part that we're going to be replacing, and in my experience, those usually come up with this piece all as one, and that's not what it did. So yeah, something's definitely a little little wackadoodle down here. If I knew it was gonna come out that easy, I might have, whoa, hello. Almost shot me right in the eye. <laughs> there it is. All right, let's get a good look at this thing. I'm just curious if it's uh, if it's as bad as I think it is. I mean, it, it looks like the little plastic case on it's loose. Like something's coming apart here. All right, well, I'm gonna have a closer look at it. Yeah, this is the old switch. If I turn this, I can hear and actually I can feel crunching inside of it. Yeah, not good. There's a really hard crunch right at the very end of it. And there's an awful lot of free play. It's like there's a dead spot. And I can confirm that because we had a dead spot where we turned the switch to a certain point and then the um, idiot lights would go out. So that means if we were to, if this switch did work, if we were to turn it into the start position, if you don't have idiot lights, it means you probably don't also have power to your coil because everything is off. 
So that means the car's not gonna start. It may crank, but it ain't gonna start. So here's our new switch. And this one, really smooth operation. I don't feel the case expanding on it when I turn this. And the start is at the end. And it feels good. I can actually feel the spring progressively get tighter on me. Not the way the other one felt at all. Okay, well let's put this back in. Simply goes right back into this thing here. Oh, you know what? I see what happened. The reason why we were having issues with that, and I almost forgot, there's this little tiny micro screw right here that holds this little tab, which is broken off, into the tumbler. So without that screw being removed, this was broken. So this wasn't even settling to where it needed to be. This is why it came apart like it should not have. So it was probably also not seated properly in here. So as we were turning the tumbler, it was it was skipping a beat perhaps, or just not moving effectively because the entire switch is turning inside the tumbler. Anyway, that's gone now. So we're gonna remove that screw. We'll get this little piece of plastic that's way up in there out that was captive, because this is the little hole here where it's supposed to go. See that little hole in there? Anyway. We'll get that pulled out. I'm going to do this off camera because this is precision little micro screw stuff and if I fuck this up I'm going to lose it and we're going to have bigger problems and I don't want to do that today. Well, the reason why our day was spoiled, the new one is now installed, the little micro screw is reinserted and this whole assembly should go back into the steering column just like this. Sure it goes in there and then we got to put the plug socket back onto the back of it. Now, this is polarized. It only goes on one way. It's seven-sided. I think it's seven-sided. One, two, three, four, five, six? No, it's six-sided. Okay. Anyway, it is six-sided, but you see it's not a regular shaped hexagon. It's very irregular. So it's kind of hard to put it on the wrong way, but it only goes on one way, so try to get it on there. Try, try, try. There you go. You can see me. There it is right there. That's where it's gonna go on. In fact, that helps me a little bit. Almost as much as a mirror. It goes on just like that. Oops, I pulled it back off by accident because I'm an idiot. <laughs> where the hell did it go? There it is. I have no depth perception looking in this camera though. There it goes. All right, it's on. Now we'll just verify, reconnect the battery real quick. Just make sure that things switch on like they're supposed to. Because if we have a bigger problem, we're gonna wanna know it now. Yeah, it looks like it's working okay. And the start is currently disabled because start is up here instead. But should we switch on, uh, I don't know, headlights? We should have lights now. Hey, we do. Good. Fantastic. Whereas before, we did not. I don't know if you can see it in there, but if I pull this on, there you go. That's something that was not working properly before. Yeah, there it is. One of our four ways are working now. No, they're not. When the car first came home, it did work, and then they never worked again. I'm gonna have to look at that. That's a separate circuit from this stuff. Although this switch is very complicated. It has so many different connections on it. And it's not just because it closes switch connections, but it actually opens up other wired connections elsewhere. So it disconnects things and reconnects things. I mean, there's a bunch of different circuits that it breaks and connects. So it's, it's essentially, it reroutes uh, your electrical. It makes your four ways work, but yeah, that doesn't work properly. So we need to get in there too, but so far so good I mean headlights are working again, and they're reliable, which is something that they weren't before if I mess with this key yeah, They would turn off now they stay on well good Okay, let's uh, put our screws back in this cover after we disconnect our battery of course back out it goes Boop. and Let's start putting things back together here Put this guy back in very delicately so we don't drop the screws. There it is. And then we need to get in here and tighten the screws back down on it. This is not something that I want to use the impact on because these things aren't supposed to be overly tight. You don't want to bang them tight at all. In fact, the screwdriver sucks. Let's try the other screwdriver here. Uh oh, people are yelling. I guess. All right, there it is. That's reinstalled. Let's put our switches back in. This is delicate. This white plastic, by the way, is very brittle. In fact, look at the wires in there. They're not in very good shape. It looks like there might have been a little bit of a burning here at some point. Yeah, something burned up at one point. It looks like the wire is still intact, but 
The jacket on is not very good shape, not at all. Okay. Reinstall it here. And there we go. Now we gotta tighten up our four screws, these guys. Alright. We have got our four screws nice and tight. Now we gotta get the wiring harness plugged back into this in here. And this can be a little tricky, but you can see the pins coming out of there. These are kind of irregular shaped also. You really can't get them wrong unless you don't plug them in straight, because you could easily put them on the wrong pins. Here we go, we got the one. Come on camera, quit putting me in weird modes here. And then the other one should go on there. Just like this. Go on. I might need both hands. No, I got it. There it goes. Okay, it's in. They're actually plugged in all the way now. They actually fit tight, whereas before they kind of just slipped off with minimal effort. Good. Let's start testing some stuff. Got our ignition switch on right now to the full on position. We have headlights, which we know were working before. In fact, I see a little blue light down there, which means the high beams are on. Let's see if we can turn them off. Oh, look at that. We couldn't do any of that before. Let's try turn signal. I pushed on it just a little bit just a second ago there. Yeah, it looks like we might still be having a, a turn signal problem. That may be the relay, actually. The fact that it did work before and now that it's not, and the fact that that's not working either could certainly be the relay. Maybe it's just loose. We'll have to look at that. But otherwise, the, um, let's see, does a dimmer work in the, this thing here? Yeah, it's not good, but it does work. That's in the switch that's inside of here anyway. It's not in the wiring. But it shows that it does work. Now the wipers, they came off for a second before I hit the record button. Now they're not coming on at all. So I don't know what's going on here with that. We may have to check the fuse block. Maybe I blew something out. Maybe there's another wire that's still not connected properly. Or maybe it's something that's down below here in this little wiring harness that isn't working properly. Otherwise, I'm not certain where that problem is. So that's one that we're going to have to track down. And there's our horn, by the way. The horn was never used in the middle of the steering wheel. All right, well, things to look at. There's our fuse panel, and it looks like they're all good, but that doesn't mean anything. Typically, these things will tarnish on the tips, and just wiggling them back and forth or spinning them around in their little slots is often enough to be able to get an item working if it doesn't want to work. If, of course, it's a problem with the connection, it's right here. All right, try wipers again. No, still no dice. And they're on, and if I mess with the key, it's not doing anything goofy like it was before. And before, the uh, idiot lights would turn on, and then if I turn the key a little further, it would go off, and it's not doing that now. Now they stay on. They stay on just like they should be. Same with the headlights. As soon as I turn this thing on, the headlights come on and they stay on. They don't flicker on, off, on, off, on, off the more I turn that key. So, okay, key switch was definitely a problem. We're way ahead of where we were. I guess we need to sort out a few more things. So, let's see if we can figure out what's going on with the turn signal relay. To the hood right here, this is our turn signal relay. Doesn't seem to fit in there very tight or snug. You know, it's a little sloppy. This is, um, one of the more modern, yeah, I guess it's a solid state relay. It says it's for LEDs and stuff as well. So these work a little differently than the old classic ones. I went and I grabbed a whole bunch of relays that I had, flasher relays, that were sitting amongst my junk. This being a three pin, this is a two. Sometimes you can put a two in place of the three. So let's see if that's gonna work. Ah, you know what, as a matter of fact, it's tinging. Hear it? There it is. Yep, sure enough. Looks like our relay was bad. Okay. We got a flashing light here. Probably a flashing light up front. Yep, there it is. I speculate to say the opposite side should also be working too. There we go, flashing. We'll check the tail light on that other side. There it is. Good. Alright, flasher relay is definitely a problem. We'll go back to the store and we'll go get another one of those too. I don't want to use that little one because 
that thing, I don't know how long it's gonna last, to be honest with you. Might as well get a new one with a warranty, right? <laughs> All right, good, that's working. Okay, I guess we can put our steering wheel back on at this point. Oh, I made a mark in there, if you remember correctly. So I should be able to get it lined up. There's the mark, and there's the mark. Okay, we're good. And then in here is our nut. The nut goes right on here. And we're gonna tighten this down properly. This thing was not tight by whomever assembled this car. So this is, uh, I get it started with the impact, then I'm gonna come back to this thing with a proper wrench and tighten it down. Okay, now let's just make sure that the signal still works the wheel on. Yeah, signal's working, signal's working. We got our headlights, they're on. High beam, low beam, still working, good. The horn ring does not work because <laughs> horn button's down there, but we still have no wipers. I wonder what that's all about anyway. Hmm. I guess we'll have to chase the wire on that, or it could be down here as I thought, but yeah, I think it's a, a green and a black wire or something like that goes up to the wiper. So we'll have a look under the hood there and see if we can get that sorted out. That's something I really can't take you guys for the ride with, but uh, it's one of those things I just have to get in there and just start poking at things until I find the problem. The wipers typically have its own harness. Is this it? Yeah, there it is. Black and the green wires. And those are the ones right there. See, there's already been a splice put in there. We'll have to check all these connections and make sure they're doing what they're supposed to do. Here's our ground. I don't know what the hell that goes to. These are not factory wires here. These green wires that you see. contracted to figure that out. Oh, you know what? Those go into the start wire. Yeah, start button. That's exactly where they go to. I can see they go up under there to it. Okay, that makes sense. Anyway, yeah, that's our wiper harness. We gotta figure out why this doesn't want to work right. All right, well, I guess I'm gonna do some voltage checking under there and see if we can figure it out. For a minute to use the toilet, come back outside and holy shit, the neighbor's house is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I don't miss a thing, man. Oh, wow. That is, uh, that is incredible. I've been hearing sirens and stuff. Um, I wasn't paying any attention to this. My back was to all this. And, jeez. I mean, I hate to see that. I hope everybody's okay, but, wow. That is terrible. That place is going down, baby. just responded to I mean I just started hearing these sirens so oh my god that is bad that is really really bad that was a victim and he's treating the dog right now. We don't know if anybody's actually home or what the deal is here. Neighbors say that whoever lives there does work at nights, but uh, it's tough to say if anybody's actually home. It doesn't look like they brought anybody out, but I guess we'll see in time though. But hope the dog's okay. I hope the people are all right wherever there might be. I just want the commotion in the neighborhood settled down. It was just way too noisy to do any more filming out here, but uh, we're in a good spot now. Again, a little later in the day, it's kind of cooling down out here. Although it hasn't been all that hot to begin with. It's actually nice here in Florida, and this is really weird to say that for this time in July. Although when I first moved here, it was this way. Things have just been progressively getting warm over the last 20 years. But it's in the low 80s, and there's virtually no humidity. It's like, this is nice. I mean, I'm sweating, but, like, I'm not dying. You know? Anyway, there is no 
no brake fluid in there at all. So when I step on the brakes, it doesn't work worth a damn. In fact, it doesn't really work at all. And uh, because of that, I can't get a brake light to come on either. So we're gonna have to bleed out the brakes and make sure that works. So I got some fluid here. I'll pour that in there and we'll see if we can get any pressure on it at all. And then we're gonna check to see if brake lights come on. And I filled it right up to the top and I did that on purpose because we're gonna be bleeding out the brakes anyway. Let's see if we can get any pressure on that brake pedal. But before it would go straight to the floor and like I said, there was almost no brakes at all. There it goes, I'm starting to get some pressure. Spongy as hell, but we're getting some pressure now. That's good. There it goes, now it's really building pressure. Still gonna be air in those lines though. What I'm doing right now also is I'm putting pressure in there to see if anything's ruptured anywhere, I'm gonna find it. All right, let's see if we got any brake lights. Backup light working anyway. <laughs> we do have no brake lights currently. I'm gonna have to look into that. I don't know what's going on there, but uh, anyway, there should be a black and red wire up underneath the hood here. Typically, it's right here. That's what comes up from the brake light switch. In fact, there is brake lights, black and red, and somebody labeled it. That's convenient. All right. Now I gotta figure out why it don't work. <laughs> yeah, and I'll be tracing voltages on this here. Gotta figure out which the, this comes from and where it's going to. Looks like it's going into this harness here, which probably goes down below. Okay. Now let's see if we can get that sorted. Get up. Pull the whole harness out for the brake lights. Turned out it does still have dual brake switches, which are the three pin ones. And the wiring harness was connected all wrong into the uh, main wiring harness. In fact, one of the wires isn't even hooked up at all. And that's because the safety warning light that's uh, supposed to be on the dashboard for a 72 isn't there anymore. So this actually needs to be capped off because technically this could short out on something and blow fuses. Anyway, no fuses blown at this time, but these were not connected properly into the harness. Yeah, they weren't connected at all, as a matter of fact. Just this one was. This one was not correctly connected. In fact, this thing tried to be connected. Yeah, anyway. I went down there and checked continuity on the switches, and I stomped on the brakes, and it did not trip up my meter at all. And I tried the outside pins, which I believe is where the power flows through. The middle one is the one that uses the back feed feature that is uh, part of the brake safety warning light, which is bullshit by the way guys. If one of your circuits fails, you'll feel it in the pedal long before you, you even would care about a light on the dashboard. I think it's only for idiots. Idiots. The people who don't know how to top off their fluid, you know, put air in their tires kind of thing. At least these cars don't require water, like, you know, those do. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> you can neglect a Volkswagen a little longer, I guess, as long as it has oil. Anyway, I got as far as uh, turning this on here. And then checking the tail lights and pull the light switch. All right, there it is. We do have tail lights, so we know those are working, right? But since I have the harness now properly connected, I went and plugged in this here. It was already in, but it looks like I didn't push it in quite far enough to make the brake lights come out. But anyway, we should have brake lights now. Oh, let me turn off the tail lights completely. There we go. Tail lights off. Now we got some brake brake lights, okay? Those are working. So the wiring harness is now properly connected. Everything in the wiring harness should work. I'm gonna have to replace the brake light switches and I had to re-bleed the brakes anyway because when you pull out switches, you know, it essentially lets fluid out. And you know, what happens is you gotta re-bleed your brakes. So we just happen to have problems with fluid and all that stuff anyway. So that's actually kind of a blessing that I don't have to do it twice, I guess you could say. So anyway, I'll refeed these wires down to where they belong. We need two brake light switches. We'll get those for tomorrow. I also got to return the fucking, this pisses me off so much, that stupid 
uh, regulator that doesn't work right. That piece of shit right there. That damn thing. Brand new, don't work right. It just doesn't work right. <laughs> it just doesn't work right. It's uh, not tickling the generator, apparently, because the generator has that extra coil in it on the DF terminal. So you have to power the generator in order to get more power back out of it, and that's how that works. So anyway, um, the regulator's not sending the power back to that for whatever reason. So the generator doesn't make the voltage like it's supposed to. The solid state one, however, did put that voltage back into it. When I shoved the solid, solid state unit back in there, it worked. So I'm just unhappy with that unit. It's going back. Okay, so we know we need two brake light switches. I guess I can close all this up and get this out of here. Two brake light switches. We're going to replace the regulator. And after that, i got to figure out what's going on with the windshield wiper motor. Because that thing stopped in that position and I never got it running again. I looked through all the wiring harnesses and, and the voltage all checks out to where it's supposed to be. It's hooked up a little differently than would be standard, but the fact is it's still getting voltages to where they need to be. So it's nothing to do with the wiring. Why it came on a couple times and then never again is anybody's guess, but I'm just going to probably say that uh, it uh, just has a bad motor in it. So I'm going to try to uh, juice that and run it independently from the rest of the car. So I guess we're going to wrap this video up for today. That's about all I got on this thing. Looks like we're just going to have to put more work into it another day. So licky likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck that dingle blaze to get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DougShit.net for all my different social media links. And we'll see you guys next time. Hey, you know what? Before we leave, we'll have a quick walk around and show you what's going on with this project. And a few others. <laughs> all right. Well, what's going on here? I got the front end pretty much all put back together on this thing with all the fresh ball joints and everything in there. There's a couple components that I have to replace yet, one of which is the, eh, whatever the hell that thing is called. It's, uh, it's like a tie rod, but it runs forward to back. What's that called? A drag link or something like that? So anyway, that needs to be replaced. I also need to replace a steering coupler up front, so we'll get to that as soon as I get up front there. But the fact is, this has all been reassembled, so the brake should be functional again. I didn't open up the lines at all, so it shouldn't be an issue as far as... Um, having to re-bleed them or what have you. So it's all right there. I still need to hook up the, uh, the, um, the hell's it called? Speedometer cable, which is dangling right there. Need to feed that back through it. Um, all the parts and everything are right there. I mean, there's not much to it. The big thing that I got through with, and check this out, guys. This is the one that really I put a lot of time into, a lot, a lot of time into, was getting these dual carburetors installed in here. Now these are proper Weber 34 ICT carburetors, or ITC, ICP, uh, Juggalo carburetors, whatever the hell they are. <laughs> anyway, I got rid of, yeah, there's a screwdriver in the bay, I know. Um, I got rid of the Weber bullshit progressive carburetor that was on there, along with the 30 PSI bullshit fuel pump, along with a bullshit fuel pressure regulator. This is garbage, just like a 009. You don't put one of these on a Volkswagen. Well, I mean, you probably could get away with it on a Beetle with a proper intake manifold. But on a bus, these intake manifolds, they, they freeze up, they ice up. There's no preheat on them, and what happens is even if they don't freeze, they're cold, and that causes the fuel to come out of suspension in the air, which causes it to puddle up, which makes your engine run really inconsistently. It might run lean, it might run rich, and you never know which cylinder is going to be doing what or when. So these things are complete bullshit, complete bullshit. Now I know they can be tuned properly and you could probably put them on a beetle and they have that long plenum that's on the bottom of it that allows the intake manifolds to evenly get the fuel. These don't work properly on a bus. Don't put one of those on a bus. If you put one on a bus, I'm taking it the fuck back off. Those are garbage, okay? You can throw them in the heap with your 009 distributors. Well, you know, 009 distributor actually still has a purpose. It's a good backup distributor to get you home. If you need something to get you home, it'll work. But this thing, I wouldn't put it on even that. No, it, it, it wouldn't even use it as a bone anchor. Get rid of that garbage. Piece of shit. Complete piece of shit. Anyway, I haven't even finished tuning these carburetors yet. I just dropped them in place. They are in where they need to go. Uh, as soon as I turned the key, the engine fired up and ran a million times better than it did before. And I haven't even played with any of the tuning screws on it. I haven't balanced them. I haven't even messed with the throttle linkages or any of that stuff on here. But, uh, well, I'll show you just how easy this thing is to start up because it's ridiculous. Cold start. I haven't started this thing in about, how long has it been? Three, four days, something like that. Idiot lights. Here we go. That's it. Never started that easily before. Never, never. Now, as I said, it's not in tune yet. Got to idle on it way too high. See, I just backed it off. But I need to mess with the mixture on it. These things have no chokes on them either. So it's probably running a little too rich, which is one of the reasons why I started up so easy. Because usually it takes a couple of pumps on the uh, throttle in order to uh, get it to run rich.
much enough to fire up that easy, but yeah, it's uh, plus it's warm out, whatever it's worth. And here they are. I gotta get to replacing this exhaust also. There's the new one up there. So I'll get to that in due time. But the fact is, it runs. Once again, it runs, and actually, I can get in there right now, and uh, frankly, if I put the wheels back on, it'll drive. It's not in tune, but it it will drive. So it will get me out of the driveway, or I can move it to wherever I want to move it, which is good, because dead cars that can't move is a royal pain in the ass. Because <laughs> they're always in the damn way whenever you want to do something. All right, let's shut this off. Let's get a few of the tools out of here that don't need to be in here overnight. These are things I forgot to take out of here the other day. Don't want anybody swiping my really good tools. There we go. That won't make Dad too mad knowing you're inside, right, Dad? Okay. Well, I guess that's going to wrap it up for today. Oh, wait, wait a minute. This thing, yeah. Once this bus is gone, hopefully next couple days, because I don't think I have that much left on it, then this square back is going to get taken care of. And I gotta get in the engine compartment area here, or the bed, if you will, and start cutting away all this rust. And start cleaning things up, start uh, cat pissing on everything, put a little paint wherever I can, get it dressed up, dressed out. And I have a washing machine in the backyard that we're gonna use to repair all this. So we're gonna clean this all up and put this all back together using some uh, salvage to metal. And I love using salvage to metal. And then once this is all back together and the paint is dried on it, then we're going to try to get it running. That's the key. Get it running, get it driving, and then it goes back to the owner for him to put paint on it. Otherwise, it doesn't have too much rust. I mean, the rust is all right there. And it was all in the bottom of that door, which we've since replaced on it. Anything you see on the rockers is just on the surface, so there's really not anything that's uh, too big of a problem on this car. Uh-oh, that might be an issue. I guess we'll deal with it when we get that far, if I have to get that far. I just turned on a night shop by accident. All right, well, I guess it's going to be enough for today. So, I said all the crap before about Licky Lichen and all that horse shit, so <laughs> thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. One more thing. Look at the color of my multimeter, all right? Now look. I'll be damned. <laughs> I don't believe it. If I didn't see it, I wouldn't believe it myself. Anyway, yeah, that's all. Thanks for watching.